The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. While much of the dialogue about development in the Bronx is about new malls and new superstores and the benefits, read jobs, that they might bring, often lost in the dialogue is the vitality of local shopping districts. Whether on Fordham Road, Pelham Parkway near White Plains Road or Westchester Avenue, Bronx shopping districts are fighting to survive and be part of the economic renewal in our borough. Questions about one district on Southern Boulevard have arisen about how to stimulate activity to the benefit of everyone, merchants, shoppers, and the community as a whole. Tonight's dialogue could very well apply to not only the Southern Boulevard area, but to your Bronx community as well. So if you want to weigh in with questions or comments, then call in at 718-960-7241. You can also email comments to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our show. For now, please join me in welcoming the Executive Director of the Southern Boulevard Business Improvement District, the BID, Medina Sadiq. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And also the District Manager of Community Board 2, Rafael Salamanca. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. Uh, let's start uh, with you, uh, Medina. How are we doing? What's going on down in Southern Boulevard and in the shopping district? Well, we're doing pretty well, considering uh, the economic struggles that the whole nation is having. We're doing pretty well. It's a very busy district. We have a lot of foot traffic, and so that helps the stores stay active. The, the article that really inspired me to talk about this was one in the uh, Hunts Point Express, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you saw. And they, they went down there during uh, the Christmas shopping season, right. and they were saying, well, there is foot traffic, right. but there's not enough economic activity. What are the issues that, that you think are keeping it from really thriving and, and, and keeping you from saying, wow, we're just doing fantastic? I think the lack of jobs. Jobs? I think that people are unemployed and don't have money to spend. Mm -hmm. And I think it relates directly to um, how many shoppers are in stores. Mm -hmm. I think that when you look at the unemployment rate in our district, and most of our shoppers are local, they live in the area. The unemployment rate is very high, and so if people are unemployed, they're not able to shop. Mm -hmm. One would think if you have a big, and, and what do you, how many stores are there? Approximately 150. If you have 150 stores, one would think, gee whiz, isn't that the job development, the job creation mm -hmm. engine um, that would, would drive this, but the implication is that it's not really. Well, small business is still the largest employer that we have. In, um, in your district and certainly in Southern Boulevard. Yes, it's, it's one of the largest employers that we have is, is small business. Um, and so the fact that we have less shoppers still doesn't mean that we have less employees. The stores still are employing people. Mm -hmm. So, well, let, let's bring you into the conversation, Mr. Salamanca. Your impression and your response to some of the same things that I asked there. It definitely has to do with unemployment and being able to purchase what you're looking for. I think a lot has to do also with the competition from these other big brand stores. Uh, if you want to buy a pair of sneakers, you, you have an option of spending, uh, uh, let's say, $150, $300 on Southern Boulevard, or you can go to a mall and you can get it at a cheaper price. So I think a lot has to do with the competition. And now with all the recent malls that are coming to the Bronx, it, uh, it, people tend to go and shop at the malls opposed to shopping on, on Southern What's Boulevard. What's stopping those merchants from saying, well, wait a minute, Okay, for you know, let's do a blowout sale for sneakers, 
the thought of $150 sneakers oh. is an issue in and of itself. <laughs> but let's pick another item that's not as upsetting as yes. that one. But let's just do a, a blowout sale and compete with uh, whether it be Target or BJ's or whomever else. What, what's stopping merchants? Why, why not do that? And, and especially if you're running a bid to, to make that happen and well, bring some people in. We do some sales times. We have mm -hmm. March Madness coming up. Um, we do things at Christmas time. We do things at all of the, the different major holidays. But I think that the stores are unable to buy in the large bulk that allows them to save money and so that merchandise may cost more at one of the smaller stores because they're not buying, you know, 300 coats. They may only buy 50 coats to sell. And so it makes a big difference. Yeah, although if, you know, maybe they need a bit of an education on if you if you lost leader one item and you've improved foot traffic and if there is foot traffic as you say mm -hmm. are your thoughts on that I, I I think so I think a lot has to do with the amount of uh, merchandise that they can buy and also you know one of the reasons why I think they cannot lower their um, the price on the merchandise is because of the rent that they're paying uh, ah. the square footage you know yeah it, and it oh boy, I, I, I personally believes that it does boil down to that. It's difficult to lower the price on a, on a, on a merchandise, knowing that you need to make profit so that you can pay your employees. And then if you sell one of bills. those coats or jackets or right. sneakers or whatever it is, then uh, you know that you've got to sell that because your bottom line is coming up the first of the month. Right. Is there a dialogue between property owners uh, to work with the merchants, or are they, look, we, this is what it is, uh, and... You know, that's the way it goes. Well, I can say that property owners as individuals, not as a whole, but as individuals, do negotiate lower rents with merchants from time to time. Mm -hmm. That's not something that at the bid we've taken on as an issue, but I know that individual property owners do. Do they see it in their own best interest? In other words, if the store goes, that's they're right. going to have an empty store, and, if, right. and we'll talk about whether it's possible to fill up stores or not. I mean, do they understand that, that symbiotic relationship, or are they really top-down, you pay us, and if not, I can't help I you I think out. they understand. I mean, we have a low vacancy rate compared to other parts of the city we have a low vacancy rate right now we might have four or five stores vacant um, and out of a hundred over 150 stores that's that's not a high vacancy rate mm -hmm. and so I yeah, think but they're that not making a lot of money in generating the kind of economic vitality we like I think I think that considering, again, considering the neighborhood that we're in, that we're doing as best as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Salamanca, let me read a quote that came out of that Hunts Point article, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, this is from a Bedford Park resident, and this was in the Hunts Point Express uh, just around Christmas time. There are too many of the same cheap stores here, and consumers want quality and variety. Um, he said his commute takes him to... Uh, and from work takes him into the area every day. That's the foot traffic. He says, but I don't shop here. I go to the Gateway Mall on 161st Street. Is there something to be said for saying, you know what, let's not have, let's, let's raise the, our level and maybe we'll attract, maybe not necessarily the people in the area that don't have money, but some of the commuters that go through the area. And so, you know, we, we all say, hey, honey, I'm right. going to stop and on my way home from work and buy something before I get back on the number six train. That, that is definitely something that the community board is working on. And give you a perfectly good example. Um, HRA is planning to move to the Banknote building at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, if they move to the Banknote building, there'll be 2,000 clients a day with an additional 600 employees. So 2,600 right. people commuting through Southern Boulevard uh, to get to the banknote building. Uh, so the, the community board is in talks with Medina to see how we can advertise the Southern Boulevard bid at the banknote building to attract uh, this new foot traffic. Let, let me throw out another quote to you. Um, one, the, this same guy said he saw two T-Mobile stores uh, across the street from each other's four nail salons, three ninety-nine cent stores, and at least ten urban gear stores. Right. Uh, one would think, with a little more variety or a little more creativity, even speaking to some of the um, store owners, you know what? We could attract those people to stop and shop if they walk by and say, "Well, it's just you know another store like that." Uh, your thoughts but on you that? But you know, Gary, it's hard to tell a landlord who to put in his store, or maybe a store owner to to re redo their business. Well, I think that some of the stores are, are recently talking to me about storefront renovations. 
that might make the stores a little bit more attractive because mm -hmm. I think that the merchandise is basically the same if you go to a mall or if you go to a store in the neighborhood. I think the merchandise is the same. Maybe the prices are not the same. But I think people like to shop in nice environments. And I think it's worthwhile to look at updating some of the stores. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's worthwhile. One would think you'd want to do that before you made an investment to start bringing people in and make sure right. things had a process. Uh, Robert from the South Bronx is with us. Robert, nice to have you with us. Uh, hi, Gary. I just hi. want to make two quick comments. Sure. Now, I live right next to Southern Boulevard. But back in the 70s, when I grew up in Bronx Neck, the, three top, the top three areas was number one, Fordham Road, number two, Third Avenue, and number three, Southern Boulevard. And right. there was one store on Southern Boulevard we called the Jew Man. We used to go there and get our, our sneakers, and we didn't pay no tax. And since then, it's been gone, but the only store left there on Southern Boulevard is a store called Hosiery that's similar. Um, but Third, I mean, Southern Boulevard has always been the last place to go shop because Fordham Road and Third Avenue have more stores. So you're saying that the competition is coming from even within the borough. So if you had a choice, you'd say, well, I'll go up to Fordham or I'll go somewhere else. You know, again, it sounds to me, thank you, Robert. It sounds to me like we, we still, we want to be real creative there and give That's people right. a reason to come in. Well, one of the things that we're doing now is that we're making sure that the stores on the boulevard have websites. Mm -hmm. Because we believe that we could get outside shoppers if we have better yeah, advertising. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be in that area. Where do I want to buy, um, uh, right. you know, whatever it is. That's right. And, and that would be uh, one way and, to do and, it. And, and in the bid, we have some unique stores mm -hmm. that have some unique items mm -hmm. uh, that are Bronx-based items. Raphael, what about a, an anchor store of some sort, uh, let's say a movie theater? And then all of a mm. sudden you're just naturally bringing people in almost 24 7 but certainly during the business day that that would be great we just have to find a space for a movie uh, a movie theater we have um blink fitness came to us a few months ago uh mm -hmm. and they're they're moving into southern boulevard as well uh i, I would call that an anchor st uh, store it's a big fitness uh center you know and we've also in conversations have spoken about bringing in some type of applebee's uh that would bring uh naturally the, bring people that in. would naturally that would bring people the, in to come have lunch dinner and, and, and do whether shopping. it be applebee's or i you know i don't know whoever i don't, frankly don't want to give anybody free advertising <laughs> they're getting all they can get but i understand what we're talking about What's the sale like? Is it a difficult sale to convince, uh, you know, a franchise of that nature to say, why don't you make an anchor store here? I, I don't think there's, is there an Applebee's in the southern part, uh, south of Fordham Road? No. No. no, no. no. Well, I mean, here you've got, you know, half the borough is down there. Certainly people need places to eat. They, they would like a, is it a hard sell or is it something like nobody suggested it? So no, we'll come right not, down. It is a hard sell. We have suggested it, is. it. Yes. And I think that we go back to the issue about the income in the area. The first thing that the franchisers do is that they look at the income in the area. They look at the potential for their business to grow and succeed. And a lot of times they don't see it. Is it is it the income or is it the perception of the income and the perception of the borough? I'm sure Raphael, you deal with surveys. that all the time. There's been surveys We've, that, that we did a survey. done foot, in terms of the foot traffic. We correct? did a survey and we looked at how much was being spent by each shopper, the average, and found that it was not enough to attract mm -hmm. um, the franchises at now, this one, time. One store owner, and, and I will say who he is, he's been on the show a number of times, is John Benizio, yes. who's uh, located Metro Optics down there. And he told me when he put his store down there, he put the best stuff in the window rather right. than say, and people told him he was crazy. There's a low income in that area. Put the cheap stuff out. He said, no, I put that. I don't know what the designer glasses that they sell at Metro right. Optics, but Cartier or whatever they are. He said, I put all that stuff in the window. And guess what? People came in and they, they did very well. And maybe even some people, some of those commuters who are passing through said, wow, here's a place that I can get stuff. Maybe that's another way to look at it. Making this, you like the idea? I, I, I agree with the idea. All right, I hope everybody's listening. <laughs> I, I agree know. with the idea. I think, That's... you know, we not only the commuters, but you have people that work in the district. Uh, you have Urban Health Plan, who's right. number one employee in the so, And these are people with jobs. These the are jobs not impoverished people. Exactly. These are right. working people who maybe, again, on the way home said, you know what, this is a pretty cool place. Yes. You, did you like that idea or you don't like I the idea? I think it's a great idea, and I think that we 
do, we outreach to Urban Health Plan and to other big employers in the area to get them discounts and to try to get them well, into the Well, what I'm stores. saying is maybe do outreach to the merchants and say to the merchants, you know mm -hmm. what, take a different look at who the clientele. Maybe you can attract some of those commuters or other people going through. That would be the suggestion that we're making. Out of well, it. I think that the bid is going to be instrumental in helping the stores to modernize and to change some of the storefronts. Uh, this is uh, Mark from Pelham Parkway joining us this evening. Always nice to have you on the show, Mark. How are you, sir? Hi, Gary. Thank you, ladies, gentlemen. I grew up on the Hunts Point area. I okay. grew up on Manai Street, and I remember my childhood shopping on Southern Boulevard. You had the Low Spooner Theater there, which was a movie theater. You had the Star across the street. Of course, neighborhood and movie theaters are a little different they, they don't exist nowadays, whereas, of course, in the Bronx, they were all through the Bronx. Right, but, they were all through. But also what made Southern Boulevard more attractive to people shopping from the neighborhood in those mm -hmm. days was the personal attention. You mentioned John Benizio opening a Metro Optics there. When I, want, when I needed a, a, a dress, a suit for um, graduation, my mother took me to Southern Boulevard because you knew the people who owned the businesses. They knew what you were looking for. It was tailored to you. But having said that, once E.J. Corvettes opened up on Bruckner Boulevard, a lot of people stopped shopping there and got on the number five bus and went to the promised land, E.J. Corvettes, on Bruckner Boulevard. Uh, you know, this is the you same process, but 30 years ago. Yeah, I'm going back 40. 40 years ago. But what I'm saying is I still believe that if you have that personal attention, which even a lot of store owners today don't give you, I think that is enticing because that makes you feel special. It mm. makes you feel like you might pay a couple of dollars more, but when somebody comes and genuinely helps you out, not like you're waiting in line, like if you go to a J.C. Penney or someplace like that, what always made the small business, you knew the person who ran the business, they were like family, and you always right. look forward to going there because you got that little it's extra ounce. Very, very, very good attention. point. Mark, thank you. Go ahead. That's an excellent point. So have a good day. It's just like the earlier caller talked about the Jew man, that there, there are certain stores that have been there for 50 years that um, are there because of the customer service and the relationships that they build with mm -hmm. the shoppers. Uh, what about parking? Uh, parking is an issue. I mean, mm. certainly every shopping district either has or complains about it. Right. And then, of course, there's parking tickets, which become an issue. Is there a dialogue with the city about that, and is this a big uh, issue? Well, parking is, it can be an issue on Southern Boulevard. Southern Boulevard is a very busy uh, boulevard. There is a parking lot on Aldis, um, and I know that the bid is, has been working in the past with the parking lot to give uh, the customers some type of uh, discount. Mm -hmm. uh, if they park their cars there and they shop on, uh, on, Southern, on Southern Boulevard. Something that I do want to add, is that, which has happened throughout the entire borough or through the entire city, is that the parking meters itself where you put quarters no longer exist. Now you have where you get your ticket, which right. has given an availability muni where you can meters. get muni meters, exactly, right. where you can get more parking uh, uh, spaces right. uh, opposed to before you can park two cars, now you can park three cars. Right. Uh, so I, I can say that's, that's something in a positive in terms of parking. Um, but yes, just like I imagine all other bids, parking is an issue on mm -hmm. Southern Boulevard. We, we were talking about this beforehand, and, and you, know, you mentioned Applebee's. What about a local restaurant tour? Somebody who has two or three restaurants in, in the Bronx and say, you know what? Why don't you come down and open it up here? Because a restaurant is the kind of thing, again, people on the way home from work would stop. They would linger a little longer. Maybe they'd look in a shop window. Is that a reality, let's say, in maybe one or two of the empty spaces? That we have there? a couple of new restaurants on Southern Boulevard, but they're all fast food restaurants. See, that's the, we that, need a local that's the restaurant. perception. And, you know, you get one really good restaurant. Mm -hmm. I'd go down there and have dinner with my wife. Not, not a problem at all. Well, we have El Valle. <laughs> you have, we El, have Valle. El Valle. Well, there's been discussions in the Southern Boulevard bit in terms of bringing this, uh, a local uh, Bronx restaurant in. And the discussion has been uh, you can go, you can have dinner. And the stores, right. because they see the restaurant open later, the businesses might want to stay open right. a little later right. uh, to give uh, people the opportunity to go shopping. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the, the crossings at Southern Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I know there's some information out, and, and this, to me, would be the kind of solution 
that could help, and that is this is a proposal for, I guess, a mall right at, at one end. Can, can you explain what it is? Yeah, the crossings, the developers came uh, to the community board a few years back, actually back in May, June of 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, and right on Hunts Point and Southern Boulevard and 163rd, where the gas station is at, right next to the Conway, they want to develop the whole area, mm -hmm. convert it into a Whose mall. Whose property is that now? I, um, it's privately owned. It privately is privately owned. Privately, yeah, okay. it is privately owned. And what they want, they, they want to convert that into a mall and on, on top of the mall build affordable housing. Uh, so they came to the community board back in 2010 and the community board approved the, the rezoning. There had to be some type of rezoning for that area. Uh, so we're waiting for the developers to come back and uh, propose what they're going to do in terms of the mall and also in terms of affordable housing. And they have not come back yet. Do you, do you see that mix? You know, that, that mix can work, but it's got to be done well. Do you see that mix as being a successful way of, of handling this? And, and let, me, let me add the caveat. Often when they do that, they say affordable housing, but all of a sudden there's gentrification involved and the people who really need housing are not the people who get that housing. I've already thrown up the warning sign. But. Yeah, it, it, that, and that is something that the community board is working very closely with. When a developer comes in, we want to make sure that uh, the, the rents that they're charging are, is something that our community can afford. Mm -hmm. uh, and we always say if you have 50 units in which you're going to develop in our community, half of those units have to be for people in our community. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, there's preference for community board two residents in the lottery process. And then from there, there's other things that are involved. I, and I will tell you that 50%, frankly, sounds healthy to me. We're not healthy enough. I'm very partisan to the Bronx, but 50% is a lot healthier than the 25 and 27% I hear in other projects. And they think that's some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of a gift to the Bronx when all of a sudden three quarters of the new housing is going to somebody else. Um, do you see that as a viable uh, answer here? I or, have some well, well, let's do this. Dream for me right. what you would like to see there and what you think would work that would work with the store owners and build the business. Because I, ha I have some concerns that this would be an another mall that would compete with the small mom and pop stores that are on Southern Boulevard. Suck the businesses out of it. I have some concerns about that, but for the most part, merchants that I've spoken to see it as, a, as an attraction. They believe that these new stores, these magnet stores, these anchor stores will attract more shoppers into the area and it'll work its way down Southern Boulevard. I mean, I think in order for that to work, it would have to be in part my suggestion to say, well, you know what, then improve your store and what you That's were right. saying. Um, as far as funding to do the things that you said about improving awnings and improving the way they look, how can that work? Can that work? Well, there, there are some government fundings for those type of programs. There's one called Main Street, New York State funding, um, that would help support renovations to storefronts. Mm -hmm. um, right now, Small Business Services also has a, um, a grant out called Avenue NYC mm -hmm. that also will help with redoing stores. And so there are some options to help merchants with funding these uh, these renovations, they don't have to take it all on themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you um, see, I mean, there's like a value card promotion, for example. We have I mean, a value tell, card. tell me about the value card promotion and how that we works. We have a value card, and um, different stores on Southern Boulevard agreed to participate in a discount program. We actually sent a, a flyer out in the mail to local residents that invite them to come in with a discount card to get whatever discount the stores decide. Each store determines a different amount. But we do send out a, a flyer. Mm -hmm. um, that and who gets that? Is that just the local residents? Right now we just do local residents because that's the bulk of our shoppers. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they get discounts at the stores that participate. Seems to me you may want to stand at that subway station and, and hand them out. We do that too <laughs> in the summertime. Oh, well, I didn't say today. I understand <laughs> that it's been, the weather's been pretty crummy. Um, Raphael, you dream a little bit. Tell me, um, is that proposed crossings at Southern Boulevard with housing on top of it uh, what you'd like to see. Get, tell me a little bit about how you see being able to develop Southern Boulevard. Well, in terms of the crossings, I, 
I, I think it's a great idea. You know, you I, like I the think idea. I, I mm -hmm. think you know bring depend. You know, you have to be very careful in terms of what store you bring in uh, to to the area that will not affect the mom and pop stores. That's 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 number one. Um, and you know, the community board in terms of, of new development, new housing uh, for middle income and 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 also uh, affordable housing. I, I think it's it's something the great. The need is immense. The, the need the need is there. You know, and and right. they are we the community board is constantly getting calls uh, from residents in the community that are looking uh, for some type of uh, affordable housing or middle income housing. And they would like to stay in and, the neighborhood. And they want to stay in the community. Raise their family yes, in the yes. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, as far as um, being able to make these things happen, in other words, getting to the point, well, we've had the dialogue with the crossings at Southern Boulevard, or you have a vision for housing, what, what, what are the real boundaries or the real obstacles for getting through that and making that happen. Is there so, I mean, what we hear is that there's so much hesitancy about the Bronx and the South Bronx, the image of the Bronx, that you know what, we can't get them to come in unless, of course, they can get a mega deal like they did at the Gateway Mall or the Kingsbridge Armory. Right. Like I'm going to say this. The Bronx is thriving. South Bronx Community Board too, we're thriving as well. We're going to get the Metro North Station. I know that our elected officials are, are, are really promoting this, and Hunts Point, we're going to have a stop for that. HRA is going to come in, where there's going to be 2,600 new people, as I mentioned before, coming in. We're going to get a when lot. When is that, by the way? That by the end of this year, 2013, mm -hmm. uh, the beginning of 14. We're going to get that foot traffic. And we just, you know, what we need is we need a developer to come and actually develop this, build this, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and they, will, they will prosper. Um, Medina, let's, uh, we're going to put up some information, contact info. We'll give you the last word. What would you like to see and what, what's the message to leave our viewers with tonight about what we need uh, at Southern Boulevard? Southern Boulevard needs shoppers. <laughs> as I, say, as that. I say shop the boulevard. Shop the boulevard. Come down. And if they do, what, what do they get that would be distinctive and, and really be an attraction for people to they come by? They will get customer service. They will get people that understand them and care about them. They will get people that speak Spanish. Most of the stores have Spanish-speaking employees to help you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they also get the opportunity to barter. If they like to barter, they like to, you know, try to get a deal. I think there are deals mm -hmm. on Southern Boulevard. Uh, Medina Sadiq, the uh, executive director of uh, The Bid, thank you so much. Thank you. And Rafael Salamanca, the uh, district manager of Community Board 2, thank you thank so you. much. And uh, folks, if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com or make a comment on our Facebook page and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of Bronx Talk are available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar. Also, you can become a fan of Bronx Talk on Facebook. Next week, we'll talk about the emerging African population in the Bronx and the issues brought on for immigrants in our borough, including economic development. Then make a note on February 25, Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. will join us to talk about a myriad of Bronx issues as a follow-up to his State of the Borough Address, which is coming up next week. Bronx Talk, of course, Monday nights at 9, thanks to our producer, Jane Floro, the director, former Lehman, Lehman Lightning, Shirley Arrieta, and our studio coordinator is Dina, and to you and to the cast of thousands around us, good night, see you next week.